Okay, Bio 153 and 155 students, welcome to our online mini lecture, part one. Now, um, I want to talk about um, both the pre assessment experiment that uh, we had you guys write an abstract about, and then I want to talk about the termite experiment that you guys collected data on this week because we made it so the experimental design is very similar between these two experiments. So first let me talk about the London and Jean paper that you read for your uh, pre-assessment on scientific reasoning and writing. And um, as you may recall, their hypothesis was that the nest envelope of um, a particular wasp species reduced the risk of parasitism by a certain kind of flying parasite. These were forid flies. And their prediction was that if they um, manipulated the nests or they, they removed the nest envelopes experimentally, the nests that have had that, had that treatment would show higher rates of parasitism by these forid flies than would control nests that had not been manipulated. And here is a picture of the of the species that they used, Plivia occidentalis. It's a common wasp in uh, Central and South America. And here's the nest. You can see the covering here is called the envelope. This is the entrance here. And uh, for this experiment, they removed the bottom part of the envelope for a treatment nests. <clears throat> and here is a, a graphic of their design. Um, you may remember that they did half of the study in Costa Rica and half of the study in Venezuela. Um, so this graphic then shows how that was set up. Uh, each one of these white blocks here shows a pair of nests. So what they did was they, in both of these field sites, they located a couple of um, wasp nests that looked like they were healthy and doing well. And uh, they had to be within 100 meters of each other. And then they randomly designated one as the treatment and one as the control. And as I said, for the treatment nest, uh, every day in the afternoon they removed the, the lower envelope, which exposed the comb. And uh, they did no manipulation to the control nest. And uh, so there were a total of 10 pairs of nests like this, that one a treatment, one a control, in both... Uh, at both of the field sites. Okay, so there are 10 pairs of each at each field site. So their dependent variable was the number of flies emerging from the nest. Because you remember, after a week of the treatment, they collected the nests and uh, they sectioned the different brood combs and put them in little plastic containers with cheesecloth covering the top. And every day, uh, Dr. London would count the number of forehead flies that had emerged. So for each nest, over the week that it was uh, collected, or over the week that the combs were, um, were kept um, at room temperature, they counted the number of forehead flies or parasit parasitoid flies that emerged. So the dependent variable, the thing they measured for each nest, was the number of flies that emerged over that seven days. The independent variable then, or the thing that they manipulated, was um, the envelope of the nest. So the presence or absence of an envelope on a nest, it being absent on a treatment, present on a control, was the independent variable in their experiment. So the question is now, um, once we've collected our data, once Dr. London and Dr. Jean collected their data, how did they know whether they fit their predictions? Remember, their prediction was that um, for their given hypothesis that if they removed the envelope from treatment nests, left it intact in control nests, they would observe more parasitism of the treatment nests than the controls. So they collected data, they made observations, and then how do they know? Well, you can see I've answered my own question there. That was supposed to be animated. Uh, but we use statistics. So statistics are a tool that biologists use to determine whether or not our predictions um, are, are met with our experimental uh, data that we collect. So it's important when talking about 
uh, statistics and um, hypothesis testing in biology that uh, we um, define some things. Uh, one thing that is very often confusing for students is uh, statistical hypotheses because we talk about normal hypotheses, biological hypotheses, and then we talk about statistical hypotheses, and uh, they're a little bit different from each other. Uh, statistical hypotheses are predictions that are very specific, so they're actually predictions that are specific to a particular experimental design, and we'll talk about what they are in this, in this case in a second. Whereas a general biological hypothesis is, uh, is much broader. So statistical hypotheses, um, one statistical hypothesis is referred to as a null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis always assumes that there's no relationship between our dependent and independent variables. Um, whatever pattern we may observe is just due to chance. There, um, so, for example, with the wasp's nest, the, the um, observation of um, the number of flies emerging between treatment and controls, whatever patterns observed would just be due to chance. And the alternative hypothesis then assumes that there is a relationship between our dependent and independent variables. So it assumes that, uh, that uh, the dependent variable does not vary only due to chance, but due to our manipulation of our independent variable. So in this experiment, the null hypothesis was that the proportion of treatment nests, so nests that had the envelope removed, uh, with more forward flies emerging than controls. So remember, there were pairs of treatment and control. So um, the number of times that the treatment nest would have more parasitoid flies that emerged from it than its corresponding control nest um, would be uh, 0.5. Or there'd be a 50-50 chance on whether the treatment nest would have more parasites emerge from it versus the control nest. So that's the null hypothesis, that uh, there's no relationship between envelope presence and risk of parasitism by forward flies. Then the alternative hypothesis, or H sub A, is that the proportion will not be equal to 0.5. So it assumes there is a relationship between the dependent and independent variables. And so here are what their data look like for each of the field sites. <clears throat> now you can see that um, there's some X's down here. I think this is because some of the nests and some of the pairs didn't survive um, the whole week that they were exposed to the treatment. And there's also some cases here where neither nest had any flies emerge. So for the kind of analysis they did, they looked at the number of pairs where at least one fly emerged and then scored them based on whether there were more that came from the treatment nest than the control or vice versa. So when you do it like that, if you count them up, 14 out of 15 pairs with it, that it had at least one fly emerging had more flies emerge from the treatment than the control. And that's a proportion of 0.933. So 14 out of 15, that's a proportion of 0.933. Remember the null hypothesis was that the proportion would be equal to 0.5. And 0.933 seems well, pretty different from 0.5, but how do we know for sure? And um, if it's just our opinion, then how would we, how would we defend that? What if, what if the proportion were, were 0.533? Is that different enough from 0.5 for us to say that, that, um, that our null hypothesis is not supported? So that's the question that we answer with statistics. And London and Jean performed a statistical test uh, called a sign test. And it's, this is a particular test that um, works fairly well for, for uh, small samples. And they didn't have a large number of nests because it was very labor intensive to find uh, these wasps that um, nest way up high in trees and can be difficult to find. So they performed this sign test in order to answer the question. 
And their test gave them a, a p-value of 0 0.001. So what is a p-value? A p-value, and this is very important for this class, you'll be calculating lots of p-values in the next, uh, next few weeks. The p-value is the probability of obtaining this result or a result more extreme if the null hypothesis were true. So if the null hypothesis were true, that um, there's no relationship between the dependent and independent variables or the presence, or the presence of an envelope and the risk of parasitism, this is the likelihood that our data would produce um, this result, 0 0.001. And by convention in biology, we reject our null hypothesis or we say that the data are sufficient that that um, they don't meet predictions of our null hypothesis if our p-value is 0 0.05 or less. So in this case, because their p-value was less than 0 0.05, London and Jean then rejected their null hypothesis, which was the proportion of treatment nests with more forward flies emerging than controls would be 0 0.5. Remember, their observed value was 0 0.933. They used their statistical test that determined that that was different enough from 0.5 that they could say that uh, they reject their null hypothesis. And then London and Jean used this result from their statistical test as evidence to support their hypothesis that the nest envelope provides protection from forward flies. Okay, we'll pause for a second.